Anyway, so, so now we want to move on beyond universal calculus to have relations, binary, and so on. Uh, but as it turns out, and I, of course, designed it this way, it's not a huge leap. In fact, in some ways, it's quite a small step. Uh, because let's remember, when we have propositional logic, we write something like P. Um, and, and that would just stand for some proposition, like P maybe means it's raining. So this is a proposition. And then we can, and, and in fact that's all we can do in, in uh, propositional logic is combine propositions with booleans, so we can say something like P and Q and R are all true. Then we move up to universal calculus then it gets more complicated because if we write something like H, H is no longer a proposition, it's something which is either true or false, so it might be the property of being honest. And we allow Boolean combinations of properties, so we might say something like, uh, this might be the property of being either honest or good looking. Now it looks exactly, we're using the same sort of notation for combining propositions, but we're combining properties, and superficially it's quite different because uh, here it's just as defined by the usual tooth table, but this corresponds, if you think properties as sets, this corresponds to set union. And furthermore, in, in the universal calculus, uh, you still have propositions, so you can, you can say, for example, SH, and that says maybe Socrates is honest. They don't, these properties you can apply compound properties to individuals. So, for example, uh, this says, might say that Plato is Greek, but not honest. And you can, of course, even combine them further Plato is Greek, but not honest, and Socrates is honest. Now we have uh, a further, and of course there's the universal and, and individual, but I'll, let's move on. So the next step is to consider relations. So let's say L is the relation of liking. Uh, so now we want to be able to say more complicated things, such as uh, Socrates, well, Socrates likes Plato isn't all that complicated, but we might say that um, Socrates likes all Greeks and things like that. Now, do we need a whole sort of elaborate syntax and everything? No, as it turns out, the way I've designed it is it's really a very simple sort of incremental change. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is just make a little, uh, a little change, not in the notation we write, but in the notation we use to describe these things. And in fact, you've already seen the change. Instead of saying the property of being honest, I'm going to introduce a little symbol. It doesn't appear in our formulas, it's just for describing things. Uh, and you'll see why I do this. Instead of saying the property of being honest, I'm going to introduce the symbol zero with a circle in it. And, and that stands for whoever is being talked about. So H could stand for one is honest. Uh, sorry, zero is honest. Zero being whoever's talked about. Now, you actually, you, you, I used that on the, I guess, on the midterm of the assignment. That doesn't take much getting used to. You can think of zero with a circle as being something like, well, one way of thinking of it is it. It is being the subject of the property, so it is honest. But actually, I was thinking about it. Uh, in some contexts, it makes more sense to think of it as I. So, I am honest. You read that as saying, I am honest, but we use this impersonal form. 
Uh, and the reason I've switched to this is because if, if I simply said L is the relation of liking, that's ambiguous because it doesn't say who's liking who. You know, a, a binary relation has two arguments, you know, they're, they're ordered and, and it's important to know who likes whom. So what I'm going to do is change it, I'm going to use both 0 and 1, and I'm going to write L as 1 like 0. Now, I worked on this for quite a while, and you'll see that what does 1 stand for? Um, we'll only see in a minute. So this, and I'll explain why, this is going to stand for Socrates likes Plato. Now, why do I put the letters before rather than after? Um, after is more common, for example, in the exercises I handed out, they, they put the letters after. I assume you'll be able to adjust. Uh, the reason is, if you put the letters after, uh, well, it's not, first of all, it's not backwards compatible with the universal calculus. And uh, actually, a whole lot of stuff goes really wrong. Uh, so the syntax works out best if you're basically using a prefix notation. <coughs> uh, so that's why you say SPL. And incidentally, uh, this is, this is, doesn't, or in, in, if we were letting it correspond to English, we would put the L in between. We say SLP, uh, but that's only because that's not all that natural. That's because English is what's known as a, a subject verb object language, like French or for the most part German, where the verb goes in between. Uh, but there are languages with other orders, and in particular, there's languages like Japanese, which are subject object verb languages. Now, does anybody here speak Japanese? Oh, great. That's really great. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So how would, you, how would you say Socrates likes Plato in Japanese? Should I speak Japanese? Yeah, just speak Japanese. Socrates wa Pluto ga suki. Yeah. And the last bit says like. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is this is great. I, I don't know much. I, I know hardly any Japanese, but I do know about so uh, Yeah. So in, in other words, in Japanese, they, well, there's extra little words in there, but basically what they say is Socrates Plato likes. Uh, Latin worked that way. Old Latin. Uh, the, the modern Latin languages don't work that uh, way. Latin worked that way. And also German, not in the main clauses. Uh, you say Socrates likes Plato, I would say German. You say, you say what corresponds to Socrates likes Plato, but in subordinate clauses, it's uh, subject, object, verb. You say, um, he knows that Socrates Plato likes. And so, so Germans are used to, in Germany you have both. In main clauses, uh, some people say it's in main clauses, it is in subordinate clauses. So this is not even all that unnatural, but of course I didn't do it because I was inspired by Japanese. I did uh, because the syntax works out a lot better. And, one, and the main thing to realize is that what do 1 and 0 correspond to? 1 corresponds to this one, and 0 corresponds to this one. So it's what in, in conventional notation would be the first argument, and what in conventional notation would be the second. But it's important, and you'll see why. I mean, I've, but by trial and error, I've got all this down, uh, that you count leftwards. So 0 is the, the, the initial argument, and 1 is the next argument.